What's up, ladies and gentlemen? And just when you thought, when you hit rock bottom and there's no coming back from it, this person's story is going to inspire you, okay? Today's episode is going to be great. Let's go! Yo, we got Ryan and Shufei in the house. What's what up? up? What's up, everybody? Hello, everybody. First things first, we got to celebrate. We got 19,000 cases today. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say we're going to celebrate Madeka tomorrow, but I <laughs> guess 19,000 well, cases works as well. Yeah, at the time of reporting, uh, recording this, this is Madeka Eve. I'm not sure when you guys are going to listen to this. 19,000 cases going down. Okay, let's be optimistic. Let's be optimistic la. A little okay, bit. Let's yeah, you know, let's let's not just say like, hey, look, okay. although I should say that yeah, we're still stuck at home. We yeah. are recording uh, Mamak sessions remotely. Uh, we're trying our best to, you know, still keep the show going because, hey, the show goes on no matter whatever happens right now, Shufi. Yeah, actually, someone just messaged me like last week, I think. They yeah. were asking me if there were going to be new Mamak session episodes. Then I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been recording. Mm-hmm. Why don't you just reply? Haven't you been listening? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no, no. Actually, uh, we, we, we're pretty hardworking, I should say. This is so far, like every week we've been re- recording an episode. So I, I like to say that, you know, we've been pretty... Turning out the episodes. Yeah. But okay, today's episode is going to be, uh, I would say, inspiring. Because uh, I, I, I'm going to bring her on in just a bit. Shufei and I, we were uh, talking at this uh, event the other day and she came on to talk just before the both of us. And after she got off stage and we were like, oh my God, how are we going to top that? <laughs> um, but it's it's nothing about performing or, or anything. It's about her life story that, that she came on stage to share with everyone. And, and when I heard it, I was like, oh my goodness. I mean, a lot more people need to listen to this. And so ladies and gentlemen, today we have on the show, her name is Miss Joanna Joseph. Hello. Hi. Hi everyone. Hi Jin. How are you, Joanna? I'm doing okay. I think I'm coping okay. How are you? We're we're, we're good. We're good. I mean, like, uh, I mean, it could. I mean, times could be better. I'm not gonna lie. But <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, just for the benefit of our listeners who are tuning in today, could you please tell us a bit about yourself and then introduce yourself? Okay. So, um, hi everyone. My name is Joanna Joseph. I am 24 this year, and uh, I am currently a student. I am completing my intern hopefully i'll finish by next month and i'm teaching in a primary school um besides that i do some modeling and i do some acting and um i act in some music videos and yeah i thought she's just being quite humble because you know uh, she's she's a model okay full stop so you know she's in the entertainment industry but you know how she got there uh, it's just a whole different story i mean all of us are in the entertainment industry in some mm-hmm. way or mm-hmm. rather Everybody yeah. always believes that ah, it's just easy. You just need luck. And yeah, yeah, you know, once you're there, you're there. It's quite easy. You just need to do things that gathers the crowd's interest. Yeah. But like, um, before we get to that, I, 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 I want to kind of rewind back to when you were talking about how uh, you've been going through a very tough time in the past couple of months. You know, would you care to share, you know, what you've been going through? Just to kind of like set the stage a little bit to, to, to what's about to come. Yeah, so, um, well, the pandemic has been really hard for the past two years. And um, just this year, when I thought that, you know, things are going to be a little bit better, it kind of took a turn for the worse because my whole family kind of became COVID positive. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really surprising because um, we were very careful when, you know, when we were going out and whatnot, because I do lots of charity and stuff. And I make sure to take care of the SOPs and everything. But sadly, my mom ended up COVID positive and uh, she got it from her workplace so she brought it home and then my dad became close contact with her and then like I was close contact with that. So the three of us ended up getting it and my family is pretty small. It's just me, mom and dad. And um, what happened next was my dad had to be taken to the hospital because uh, he's a dialysis patient. He's been doing dialysis for the past five years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, because of that, like he had to be transferred there and he was in the hospital for nine days. And on the 10th day when he's supposed to come back, he passed away. Oh no! So yeah, I'm that, so was, sorry. that was oh my god! Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It broke my, um, it broke my heart that you know you were sharing this with everyone, and and then despite the fact that you were going through so much, you shared this to, to, you you shared it so bravely, and you were trying yeah. to encourage people to to do to do good, and and for me it's like how does someone do that? I mean, where did you find yeah. where did you find such courage to be like that? I mean, I know we're gonna get into that story real soon. 
That... Um, well, I like my dad, he always used to tell me that um, regardless of anything, because this was something I used to fear a lot, like him leaving because I'm the most attached to him in the family. I'm like a daddy's girl. Mm-hmm. So it's always just, you know, me and dad and we can talk about anything at all. And he's like my best friend. So he was the one that helped me out before as I was going through things. And until today, he's always been here and I'm very open with him. So we talk a lot about many different things, like things someone does not normally open up to their parents. Yeah. And um we had that bond. So I always used to like, you know, ask him like, what's going to happen one day when you leave and whatnot. And he kind of knew that it was my biggest fear as well. Like him leaving or something happening to him. And he used to tell me that, um, you know, life is really short and what you have to do is just cherish all the memories and create as much memories as you can and carry all of that with you when you move on, you know, when something happens. So that is your strength. And, you know, of course, continue doing what you're doing right now. Don't stop for anyone. So, I kind of had to keep it in my mind and be like, um, okay, so dad would have wanted me to do this. He would have wanted me to continue what I was doing. And um, I guess when he passed away, he transferred all his strength to me because I was surprised myself. I was just like, wow, how, how am I able to cope so much? Because I really, really miss him. Mm-hmm. But then um, something in me kept keeps telling me, like, you know, keep going. Like, do not stop. Well, well yeah. done, Joanna. I think that is, that is something really, really good. And I think that's something that a lot of people can can really draw inspiration and learn from, you know? It, yeah. Like, it's all about the energy and you're trying to take something negative and you just convert the energy and output it into something more positive because there's already enough bad energy in this world. Like, there's already enough negativity in this world. It, it doesn't help to contribute to that negativity. But I, I definitely True. think it's something that's not easy and I really admire your strength. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Thank like, you. Oh my God, this... It was it was really hard because um I've never experienced grief in my life. Right. Like this is the first time I'm like really mm. experiencing grief and this being like a COVID that was makes it even worse yeah. because like I was quarantined the whole time. I couldn't yeah. go to the hospital, I couldn't see him for one last time. All I had were pictures and you know, like um videos being sent to me. So I felt very like, you know, very weird in a sense where there's no closure at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, that made it so much more difficult to like grieve properly because like seeing is believing and like, you know, you want to be there in person to actually like see what's happening and you don't get yeah. that. So it was really tough. But then like that kind of also helped me somehow to always like um, think of the fact that, you know, he's somewhere happy. He's doing his own thing. So I should be happy here doing my own thing as mm-hmm. well. So that's how like I'm kind of coping with it. Yeah. And, yeah. and all these strengths come from somewhere, obviously, you know, inspired by your, your dad. But I, I, I kind of want to go back to the day that, uh, you know, we were, uh, Joanna, myself, and Shufei, Ryan, we were at an interna- International Understanding Day, an IU Day. You know, yeah. when we were all in high school, mm, oh, yeah, everybody yeah. loves IU Day. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's where you go, like, aha, no school. You get to meet, like, other people from other other, other schools. Yeah. You know, sometimes the boys be like, wow, the girls from uh, this other school is more prettier. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> it's yep. fun, la, you know, it's fun. You know, a lot of people get together and stuff like that. Um, so, and, and, and I think, like, the... the the uh, topic, the uh, center topic around that event was cyberbullying. And mm-hmm. you came off and you shared a really impactful story. And it just like, if I, if I met you, if I met you today, knowing mm-hmm. that you're a model, and I, you know, I looked at your Instagram profile, you've, you've done modeling, you seem very confident, you know, very bold. I wouldn't have expected you to tell such a story yep. if, <laughs> if you ask me. Yeah. I mean, like, would you please yeah. kind of share, uh, you know, about, about your life story? Because this is something that I believe uh, a lot of people need to listen to because I feel that there are some people out there who are or who are or who will go through the same like you know uh, life experiences such as yourselves okay so um, my story started off like like every other kid I'm the only child in the family mm-hmm. so I was born after a good 10 years and um you know, basically being the only child means that you're an anak manja and like you're a girl, mm. right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like, um, they were they were really, really like, you know, overprotective at first and everything. And um, I had this defect where I couldn't eat back then. Like I used to not have appetite and my parents became really worried because I couldn't eat so much. And then um, they brought me to this doctor and this doctor told them that um, I have some appetite pills or something where if you give it to her, then she'll start gaining an appetite. So that was how it started. And then like I started having this really ravenous appetite and I just couldn't stop eating. Mm -hmm. So, you know, coming from like 
<laughs> yeah, coming from like a Indian family, you know, rice is always a staple food at home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, Chinese also, Chinese also. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Malaysians lah, you know, every time we worship rice. Yeah. <laughs> so like, um, yeah, like they use. My, I have a grandma. My my dad's mom is still around until today, in fact. And you know, like everyone in my family is a foodie, so there's always like really, really good food at home yeah. and. My grandma used to like always put two to three plates for me and just continuously give oh it to me God. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I had like I can't say no to her or else she'll get upset, you know. So I just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I just started um eating and eating, and then like my my dad would buy bakute, nasi goreng, and you know he normally buys it for like five people, and I just eat it all by myself. And um, he used to be really happy about it. He was just like, okay, she's eating, it's good, it's good. But then like um that carried on continuously, and it went on for a good like maybe five to six years. And I realized that at the age of seven, right before I entered primary school, I was a good sixty kgs already. Wow! Mm-hmm. Oh man! Yeah, that, at seven years old. <laughs> At seven years old. Yeah. Okay. That was a. That's a bit bigger. Uh, <laughs> I think to put it in a. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so like I was, you know, I I was thinking that oh this is normal, you know, like um because I haven't really met people like in mm. kindergarten I was pretty mm-hmm. small. Yeah. But yeah. then like when yeah, I no. went to like primary school I was kind of a little big already. But then like my parents never really said anything, and you know I I was just like the the good girl at home j- just following the orders and everything. And um, there was this other thing where I did not know how to speak any other language besides English, mm-hmm. so that became like another barrier for me. Because when I went to like primary school, everyone was talking in like Bahasa, and then there was like Tamil and Chinese, and I was just like super blurred there because I only knew how to speak English, and no one knew how to communicate with mm-hmm. me, and I didn't know how to communicate with them. So that was the first thing. And the second thing was the fact that um, I was the biggest girl in school. I went to an all-girls school for my primary school, mm-hmm. and um, all these students were very skeptical on speaking to me because they felt that it was very alien that I looked very different from them. Mm. Yeah. Now, all, all these girls who who did that were they some sort of like the popular girl in school? Or was it every? I mean, like, was it every single person who who acted? It was that like way? every single person. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so like um, the teachers were also really confused as to what to you know where to place me and stuff because they felt that um oh she didn't know how to speak properly so maybe she should be like in the last class kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But then um I ended up in the first class and I I clearly remember like I was just sitting there I was I was super blur, and then like there was this girl who came in front of me and she was just like um what's your name? So I just said that oh uh, Joanna. And then she's like, okay. And the next thing I know, she's writing my name on the blackboard under Namo Bising. I'm not sure if you guys uh, have yeah, Namo yeah, Bising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. Why? <laughs> yeah. Were you actually like making noise in no, class? No. Wow. I was not. Oh I was just God. these God. After, nasty after you little mentioned girls. That, <laughs> after you mentioned that, right? Yeah. Now I remember in school last time when the teacher goes out. Maybe I don't know what they go out for lah. Whether it's the toilet yeah. break, is it? Okay, just go out close the job. Okay. Jangan bising ya. Class monitor. Uh, what you stand in front? Uh, it's like you're giving the power to the class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. You give them the wow. damn job, <laughs> and they start. Yeah. What they put there now? I'm gonna write your name on the board. The teacher comes back. If the teacher, the teacher will say, "Jika saya nampak nama you dekat blackboard, habis engkau." Damn. You know, they, they did that. Oh my yeah. gosh. Oh. Absolute yeah. power corrupts absolutely. You know, you know, you you <laughs> would think the pengeto is the one who who will get bullied because he's the one that always you know. Like threaten people, right? Always like, snitch on, yeah, snitch on yeah, the other snitch kids. Yeah, snitch on people. Yeah, that's why. But no. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It yeah. was bad. Like you know, mm-hmm. it was it was very very bad for me because this person was like, oh, if you're gonna, I'm gonna write your name on the board. That that yep. means that means you're a good girl. So I was just like, okay. Wait. So okay. on top of writing your name, she lied to you that it's actually a good thing to go. On your yeah, name on the board. Yeah, she said that um, if I'm writing the name on the board, it means that you're you're like a good one in class or something. Okay. Yeah, so I was I was just like okay, you know, like um maybe this is good for me, and mm-hmm. then the next thing I knew is the teacher came in and she read my name out because my name was the only name there for some reason. Oh wow! Yeah, so, so she like, victim she victimized you. Yeah, and um I I got like a earful from her, but then the funny thing is I didn't know what she was saying because I couldn't understand, so I was just right like. No. <laughs> it was so so hard, but now thinking about it, it's funny lah. But you know, back then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back then it was it was super hard and I was just like oh my god why am I getting yelled at and everyone was laughing at me so that was like the start of the bullying in school oh, right um and the teachers used to bully me as well so you know you don't normally hear of teachers like bullying the students but I had this one teacher who used to tell me that um go to the bilik guru take my books because um then you'll lose some weight oh wow 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 yeah that's just so that was... whoa. 
That was really mean. And, and, and to clarify, sorry, you were how old? Is what seven years old? Seven, yeah. You don't say that to a seven-year-old kid, yeah. like you don't say you don't say that to anyone. It, yeah. Period. I don't care whether you're like five or like fifty. You don't say that to anyone. Period. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, you didn't go to you. Okay, you didn't go into this detail uh, when when we when you were talking the other day. Well, this. This is, you know, this kind of brings back the whole uh, conversation that we were having the other day about how school should be like a safe space yeah. for yeah. kids to go and have fun, and teachers should be the ones who are encouraging uh, students to be fair, uh, to be kind to each other, and like you know, create a safe community to grow up in. Just True. I'm just curious, uh, at seven years old, how were you processing all of this? Like, what was your thoughts? If you can remember, like back then, like how were I you feeling? I thought that. This was very normal, you know, like um, I thought that, oh, this is something that happens to everyone because like when I used to come home and tell my parents that, oh, this happened, they just used to say that, um, oh, you know, like it's normal in school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I used to tell, I talked to my mom more back then when I was very young because my dad was always working and used to come back mm-hmm. in the evening. So she's the first face I see. And when I tell her that, she goes like, um, oh, you know, just just don't bother. Like this is how it normally is. So I just oh. used to think that, you know, oh, this is normal, like being called names and stuff because teachers used to call me names and the students used to call me mm-hmm. names as well and these were like my own friends that I was making mm. and they think it's funny to like you know go on and say that oh you're a pandi which means pig in Tamil mm. and then like um, you're a cow and all these kinds of stuff so it was really hurtful but at some point I was just thinking that oh you know um, it's normal to make fun with friends it's a normal thing mm-hmm. like I didn't really register it as like um, oh they're bullying me or anything because I was too young to like understand mm. what bullying was and then um, I went through all of that. Like every year, it just happened continuously. And then like people would get me in trouble for the fun of it. And, you know, just to see me get punished and all that. And I just used to take it as a form of like, haha, you know, fun. Mm-hmm. And then like um, my worst nightmare was probably when I started secondary because mm-hmm. I was shifted from to the nearest school, which from, from my primary school. And um, that was like about 10 minutes away from my primary school. And then like I was about 104 kgs by then already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was like really, really big when I entered um, secondary school. And uh, yeah, I, I remember like my first day of secondary school, there was this time where like I entered and then there were so many new faces because it's a new school, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, other schools are coming in as well and all that. And all my friends were all in different classes and I was in a different class again. So it felt as if like my childhood nightmares coming back where I have to like, you know, make friends again and talk to people and this was also an all-girls school and the fact that, you know, I, I felt this this kind of uncomfortable feeling looking at all of them because I looked so, so different mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I, I was the biggest there and, you know, like everyone was just really small and really cute and then like I felt like super alienated because I'm really tall. I'm, I'm like 180 centimeters wow, tall. Yeah. Oh, wow. You're, you're really tall. tall. You're, <laughs> tall. you're, you're tall. really oh tall. Oh my God. She's about my height. She's about she's my almost height. your height. Yeah, she's I'm almost like your height. Too. You might, yeah. you might, you might just be taller than me, oh, Joanna. Man. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm not gonna stand next to you. <laughs> man, with high with high heels, she's gonna trump me, man. You're what? Super tall. <laughs> oh god, oh, I always okay. wanted to be that tall. I, I, I couldn't live to be my that tall. yeah yeah yeah. I couldn't live my dream to be like a model or something because I'm so short. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Now that you mentioned, but 180. Is, were yeah, you always I mean, tall for your age? Like even when you were younger. Yeah, I was like okay. when I was born. The doctor told my parents that she's gonna be a really long baby, and she's it's gonna really be, like, long. Tall. Baby. <laughs> That's actually a good thing. Okay. Like when you're younger, right? People won't think it's like anything, but when you're older, right? I think it's good. You know, you get a lot of more, uh, like you get more opportunities. No, Especially uh, with yeah. like yeah. yeah, modeling and stuff. Yeah. No, yeah. the reason I, mean, I asked was just to yeah. put the weight into perspective also. Because mm-hmm. if someone at a hundred and eighty cm that's a hundred kilograms is is like different it's from okay. someone who's like hundred and forty yeah. cm or yeah. hundred fifty cm yeah. and yeah. hundred kilograms. Okay. I was, yeah. I was really big, like I looked really big. Like I was really like, you know, like this muscular guy walking. Yeah, around yeah. School. Like like everyone yeah, Jin Jin's about hundred and eighty cm, but not <laughs> I'm about ninety plus. Yeah, yeah, almost. So about you're looking about Jin's kind of physique. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. So but yeah, like, you, were, you you were in a new okay. So so you went into a new environment, and and, yeah. and what happened next? And like um, I was big, and and everyone used to just like get scared of me. Like they used to be like, oh, she's gonna trample all of us. So you know, all these hurtful comments were, were just coming, popping up out of nowhere. Like people I don't know were just talking as I walk past by. And then um, first day of Purimpunan, I, I just sat down like everyone else and it was so awkward because like I didn't have anyone to talk to and everything. 
And you know like when you duduk bersila right your legs are like that right yeah, and then yeah. like we had to stand up to sing nagaraku as you remember so when i stood up my legs got cramp and i actually fell in okay. front of everyone in school and this was my first day and nobody helped me up everyone started laughing instead and even the teachers made a joke on stage mm. oh <laughs> what did you, wow. what did you yeah. say my um, goodness I heard I heard a few of the students say elephant if I'm not mistaken and the teacher was like ah so pap tu lah berbadan besar lagi you you know something along the lines on the mic and it was so embarrassing because so I was just in like in front of the whole school yeah that's so I, mean. man well I was called badak when I was in standard six I was fat too I I was overweight <laughs> and actually to be honest it's 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 I I okay I relate to you in in a way where when you were seven and you notice of everyone talking about you and labeling you as such yeah right. When I was standard six, I was under the impression that it was normal for girls, like pretty girls, to <laughs> always hate the fat, ugly ones. And it, I, I have come to a stage where, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna accept it. This is acceptance. My mom will say, "Don't worry. When you study hard uh, and you get good grades, you <laughs> girls will come after you." Oh my god, I, I had that too. In that, in that, <laughs> Yeah, in that context, in that context, you know, I've learned to like, okay, you know what? I will study hard. I I will get at least good grades. So despite the fact that I'm fat and ugly and no girls will like me, hopefully they'll like me because of my academic status. But that didn't help because oh like, I wasn't that great of an academic. <laughs> I wasn't great academically. But uh, yeah, that was what I was thinking when I was in Senate Six, Senate mm-hmm. Five, Senate Six. Uh, yeah, my teachers called me Bada, uh, and then uh, the girls. That's girl, so mean. The, the girls called me Big Butt. When it comes so, yeah, from teachers, I, yeah. especially like these are people who are supposed to know better and supposed to guide the yeah. kids and you know like like sometimes when a student does it yeah you know it, it's wrong and it's not good but sometimes you can also say they are not taught the right way so you can sure. kind of label it under that doesn't make it any right but you know it just shows that you need to re-educate these people and, and tell them and teach them what's right and wrong but the fact that the teachers are doing it I feel is it's quite yeah. detrimental to the education uh. I but I'm very, cu- <laughs> but very curious though. Sorry, Shufei. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I'm very curious though. You said that your teachers, the teachers, have said these type of things to you. Have you reconnected with any of these teachers who said these things with you to you, or have you seen them at all? Like you know, maybe randomly in the street and whatever. Um, I have. Like, I still keep in touch with my teachers, and I actually still talk to them because I'm teaching in my primary school right now, right? So some of the oh, teachers. Oh, the same oh. primary school that you were in. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay. so some of them have left, some of them are there, but then the ones who are there who are nice to me, they kind of knew what I went through. So, you know, right. they they always tell me that oh, it's a great thing that you know, you actually want to come back because we know that we kind of put you through a really bad time and I'm just mm. like Yeah. Oh my god, this story gets better and better. This is like <laughs> the greatest comeback in history. <laughs> I, I think yeah. it's just old school parenting. Like when it comes to body weight, they will always shame you instead of telling you like, "Oh, this is not healthy." You know, you know that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was too. The aunties always say that, "Hey, why Jin so fat? Ah, <laughs> better, you know." And then I also had a lot of pimples, so they were always openly, openly chat in front of me, talking about, "Oh, you know, you should go to this the or dermatologist or that dermatologist right, right in front of me," and it made me feel a little bit more like, "Oh." And I then, feel you. you know, yeah, then they will also compare, you know, my cousins lah. My cousins damn handsome, bloody idiot. <laughs> I love him. I love him to death. Okay, he's he's one of my closest cousins, but. Some you know yeah, yeah you know they were shooting you know my son now uh, this and this and that, you know yeah like like mm-hmm. Shufei mentioned old school parenting and it's but I to feel be honest, with parents and grandparents is you cannot win lah when you're you're too fat <laughs> like why you so fat lah huh? go slim down some more when you're too skinny why not eat enough yeah, is like yeah same same nah, harvest, 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 yeah, harvest. Yeah. <laughs> for me also like because I I'm skinny all my life right like a bit too skinny sometimes you know then people like my aunties and all they'll be like oh my god you never eat properly is it you got parasites in your body is it why why you cannot get fat you know that kind of thing cannot same thing la. yeah I cannot win yeah. really. I had yeah. experienced that like during weddings especially mm. because like oh you know we had, <laughs> <laughs> I always used to get like um, all my aunties coming up to me and be like hey you put on weight already ah. and then during Christmas hey you put on weight already ah. even in church you put on weight already ah. and I'm just like <laughs> stop <laughs> yeah why? Why? Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, I, 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 I know we dabbled like really, really like <laughs> way off. So you were in the school and 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 you fell down and then you know you had these uh, names being called at you by students and also teachers as well. Then what happened? Like what? what how yeah. did that made you? How did that make you feel at that point in time? That made me feel embarrassed. I, I felt really, really embarrassed. I just felt like, oh my god, it's my first day and I'm already like blundering it. You know. Mm. 
and um i got up myself and i went to class and then like this was the worst part because like in a new class you have to find a place to sit and then like everyone's just making friends and sitting with someone and mm-hmm. when i entered class like everyone was already sitting with everyone because they already left me and went beforehand and i was the last to enter so we had this whole like um everyone was just staring at me and i'm just like oh my god i feel so anxious and um i entered and i there was this one place at the back and i just went and sat there alone and just no one wanted to sit beside me because there were late students as well but then when the teacher said that um, oh there's a seat beside her no one wanted to sit oh. so it kind of made me feel like okay i i kind of know like where this is going already and i know why because it has happened before and um it it was like that for the past i think one or two weeks where like i tried to you know i attempted to like talk to people and stuff but then they would just be like you know looking at me up and down and then like i had people who were like um holding like my my book at the edge when they were giving it back to me you know because they didn't want to touch it fully and then like they were saying it like um oh like fat people carry diseases so we shouldn't like hold anything and they just held it like that they threw it on my table so it was very very um sad because i i felt that this is when i started feeling a lot more than my primary school i i realized that you know probably it's because i became mature a little and i kind of felt that oh this is what it feels like to be insecure <laughs> this is what it feels like to be you know um pushed aside and and all of these feelings and um another thing that happened in high school was just that the fact that people used to come at the back of my uniform and they used to just like try to check and see on um what size I was wearing so when they couldn't find it they used to ask me like oh you didn't buy your clothes right you stitched it and yeah that was the fact i actually stitched my uniforms because i couldn't find like you know a uh, a size for me because mm-hmm. i was that big mm mm-hmm. and that used to be another factor where they make fun of and um when i stood up in class people used to go like hey sit down i can't see the whiteboard you 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 fat person and you know all these oh kind of God. terrible stuff that's so terrible yeah see being in all girls school people might mm. think that's very fun but uh no. <laughs> actually women can be yes. <laughs> yes. <can't> be <laughs> terrible <laughs> but okay what was your what was your coping mechanism at that point of time Um I used to write a lot like I still write a lot until today and I okay. used to write a lot back then in my book diary this was something I practiced ever since I was in primary because I think in primary we had this thing where we used to ask our friends to write bio data in our yeah, book yeah. right Yeah Yeah so I carried that on forward but I started journaling instead so when I was alone in class and when you know I feel really lonely and stuff I used to write like a lot like dear diary today was blah 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 blah, blah. and then like it used to be a daily entry sort of thing And um I I finally made a friend I think after a month because she shifted from one class to another class and her name was Azlina and she's my best mm-hmm. friend until today. Mm-hmm. So she also became a um a victim of bullying because of her size and because of how she looked like. Um she was also plus size and she was dark skinned so a lot of people used to bully her for that and call her like names like awful awful names. And then like teachers in the class always hated us because we were always together we, we always had each other ever since we found each other and right. um the whole class kind of went against us and they used to like last time they used to bully us separately and then started bullying us together where they'd be like oh look two elephants walking or oh, oh, look two this and two that so oh, that wow. happened <clears throat> and um we were coping because we had each other and it came to the point where like whenever i feel like i don't want to go to school i have to like inform her and tell her that i'm not coming tomorrow and then there are times where she would not go as well because she was so scared to go alone and get bullied so she would stay home if i stayed home and it was vice versa this was going on a lot okay so there and, were um, days that where you like legit just was like you know what i'm i'm not even going to think about going to school it's not cause you're sick yeah. or anything it's just you didn't want to cope with that stress of of people bullying yeah. you every day yeah wow. it gets worse like later on because um like how my story progress was actually quite scary because um from from be getting bullied in person I started getting bullied online as well. Yeah. I think I also mentioned it to Jin the other day on what happened to me the whole sexual harassment thing. So what happened next was I figured that I wasn't going to be making friends in real life because no one liked to talk to me and everyone just you know pushed me aside. So I decided to open a Facebook account. Mm. And um I think that time Facebook was the thing because like you know we didn't have like WhatsApp or Instagram mm. or anything like Facebook was the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and everyone was having facebook so i was just thinking that maybe i should give it a shot maybe people online would like you know accept me more than people outside so i did an account and i had like um really cartoon pictures and you know all these kinds of stuff because i was so insecure to put my own picture i was so scared that someone's going to like you know say something nasty mm-hmm. and then um later on i felt a little confident to like you know post a picture of myself 
And um, throughout this whole phase, I was also actually depending a lot on music. And I think mm-hmm. that uh, Jin kind of knows this because I'm a oh, yeah. Justin, Justin <laughs> Bieber fan. <laughs> <laughs> and and, uh, and Linkin Park as well. Linkin Park as well. Linkin Park was my, my, my go-to growing up because uh, Chester... Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't actually to be honest I didn't realize that he was singing about depression but for me it was I just screamed along with the music that he was singing <laughs> and that made me feel great <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah seriously it may sound stupid but I did it alone in my, in my, in my, in my home and like maybe with like a bunch of friends like a two of us like, like you know people just sing okay. and that's why and that's where that's where I like you know in, I mean, okay when I went to secondary school I, I, I had a better like you know growing up uh, t- I had a better experience in in, in uh, secondary school because the teachers were really really, they were all retired teachers and they were all very motherly. And then <laughs> when they see something not right, right, they will really nag you until you won't do it again. So that's <laughs> that's that's how that's how it is. Um, and uh, I think that that's where I I was really fortunate to be able to to discover music. I played in a band. I performed wow. in front of a group, <laughs> and that made me become a little bit more confident in in sense like okay I, you know. I'm not ugly, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm not fat, you know. Uh, I, I'm not, you know. Uh, there are some girls out there who think I'm cute. That kind of thing. You know, you, you start to open up a little bit. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Back from the statistics where you think that all girls think uh, fat guys, fat guys, short and fat guys are ugly and stuff. Like. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I started to open up. So again, I, I, that's, I relate. I relate so much to what you <laughs> you've been through. It's so scary that you know, like it's like as if like I know, but I don't want to steal away that that. that <laughs> Thunder from you because you have a yeah you were mentioning. Wait, wait, wait but yeah. but at the time, right? Who are your friends in uh, face on Facebook? Like, were there people in your school? Um, there were a couple of people from my school, but most of it were like believers and you know uh, Linkin Park fans. Okay, okay. Because mm, yeah. I tried to like reach out to the fandom mm-hmm, as well. Like, mm-hmm. um, I started off with um Justin Bieber when I was twelve. And yep. he was someone that I really like leaned on a lot because of his music and also because of his story, like how he progressed from being no- nobody to somebody. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. really, really inspired me. So like, I used to be a Bieber crazy person. Like, until now, I still am. I'm not going to lie. Although I'm 24, <laughs> <laughs> shamelessly, I am a huge Justin Bieber mm-hmm. fan. But um, he kept me a company, meaning that I could listen to his music and stuff. So I was thinking that, okay, maybe believers would be like more open to talking and more friendly and whatnot. So I right. started this like adding spree on all this Justin Bieber. I just typed Justin Bieber and whoever that had it had the name Bieber at the back. I just used to add everyone. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because okay. my name used to be uh, Joanna Joseph Bieber on Facebook. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So like I, I started adding people and then like random people as well, you know, like normal people mm-hmm. and other schools and stuff. And that was how I started like socializing a little online. Mm-hmm. And um, it was okay, but then it was really scary because like, you know, when you're talking to a stranger for the first time, like the first time you ever use Facebook, you just don't know who that person is. But, yeah. you know, you just want to try and make friends. And that was what I was doing. And then like um, I made a lot of friends. I was very happy online initially. It was just yeah. nice to be able to talk and relate to like people with the same passion as you mm-hmm. but then um i met this like one guy on facebook so this is just where like all the problems started mm-hmm. um this guy he was from jb and he was very really friendly and you know like very very nice and he was just talking to me and a couple of my friends from my school as well so like people from my school as well knew who this person was you know with yep. all the gossip and everything and then um what happened next is I started speaking to him on the phone and texting him and you know like um, we started having like this really really good friendship with each other and then he comes forward to tell me that he likes me Mm. right so I was very skeptical about it I never had someone a guy tell me that you know I like you and stuff like that so it was very alien but some part of me felt really happy because like um, wow someone likes me you know like for once and um, in school, we used to have this, this like, you know, during recess, we used to sit down and talk and then all the girls would be like, oh, my boyfriend and this and that. And then you just be like the odd one out there. Like, I don't have anyone, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And that becomes like a bullying factor as well. Like they used to tell me that, oh, no one's ever going to like you because you're too fat and ugly. They would run away. And you think it's funny saying that, mm-hmm. but then like, you know, it's not. Okay. So when this guy told me he liked me and everything, I was like a little happy. I was just like, hey, finally someone liked me, like, you know. And um, he proposed me, he asked me to be his girlfriend and I told him I'll take some time. So I went back to school and I was like trying to talk to my friends about it and ask their opinions. And then they started saying that, oh, the reason he proposed to you is because like he never met you in person yet. If he sees you in person, he's going to run away. Right. Yeah. And all of these. So I just told myself like, okay, why not? Let's just give it a try. You know, let's just see what it's all about. And we got together in a relationship. So like this was when I was 13 years old and I was like really, really young. 
So I didn't know what I was getting myself into. But then I was just happy that there was just, you know, like someone I could talk to and, you know, someone that I could like call as my boyfriend kind of thing, mm-hmm. like a puppy love kind of thing. And this is, a, this is an online relationship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he was way older than me. He was like 18 at that time. So there's like this huge age oh. gap going Whoa. on as well. Whoa. Okay, so Whoa. you, you yeah. didn't know how he looked like as well? I knew how it looked like, but I've never like met him in person until today. Oh. Okay. okay, 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 all right. Yeah, so what happened next was like, um, he went for this national service back then. Mm. And um, he told me that, uh, oh, you know, like I'm going for national service, so I won't be able to use my phone so much. I'm going to get it back like only once a week and stuff like that. So I was just really like sad because like, you know, my favorite person is going and I have no one to talk to and stuff. So yeah. I told him, it's okay, we'll work through it. And the next thing I know is that after he went for national service, he started behaving like a creepo and he started like telling me all sorts of like sexual stuff, which I didn't really like knew of because I was so young, Mm. right? I didn't know anything at all. Yeah. And he told me that, have you tried this? Have you tried that? And I'm just like, what is that? And then he told me, oh, you need to do this and you need to do that. And I was, I was afraid. I was so, so scared. I, I just didn't know what to do and who to talk to about this because this seemed like a very taboo topic at that time. Yeah, you don't talk to your parents about but, it, nor do you even talk wait, to your how friends. Long, yeah. how, how long were you guys together until he went to NS? About a, a year. Yeah. Like, a year? A year is wow. almost so, a year, like maybe about eight, nine months. Kind of, was there, was yeah. there, wait, was there, was there even, okay, you talked on the phone. Were there, was there video call or back then or anything? Yeah, there was this one time where we Skyped and some of, most of the time we just MMS each other because like to send anything, you know, we can't really use WhatsApp. So it was all yeah, paid yeah. stuff. And the worst part is also I used my mom's phone to do that because I don't have credit. So <laughs> she, okay. she kind of had his number. And uh, he had her number as well. And she spoke on the phone once to him, but then that just as a friend kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, he, he, he went to NS and then he started behaving really weirdly. And then uh, he started asking me for nudes. And I told him that I, I do not send take pictures of myself badly and you're asking me for a nude picture. That's just very weird. And then he told me that, oh, so you don't trust me. And, you know, all this emotional manipulation mm. thing just started and he said that, um, oh, if you, you know, if you don't give it to me, that means you don't trust me. That's the first thing. And then the second thing, he's like, um, if I break up with you, you're, you're so ugly. No one's ever going to love you like how I loved you. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be all alone again. And, you know, um, it's just one picture. I promise I'm going to delete it. And I tried so hard to, you know, just like push it away every time the topic comes up. And then like, we'll be okay for a while. And then topic comes up again because he would start asking again. And he started going on for like a good maybe five to six days continuously to the point we even argued and then he just told me to like you know leave him alone and all that so Mm -hmm. I was under so much of pressure and I couldn't talk to anyone about it because I was so scared that I'll be disowned by my family and I'll also be um, disowned in my friendship circle and all that so when he asked me again I finally told him that you know what fine I'm gonna send you one but then like you know I need you to delete it on the spot and stuff like that and he just said okay so I made the mistake by actually sending it to him and then he sent me back a nude but then I was just so like I freaked out because I didn't know what that was and I just deleted mm. it and um, yeah that was it but then he started asking more like after that like continuously and I just couldn't take it anymore <laughs> and that was when I told him that's really affecting me in my studies so I need to like you know um, I, I, th- I need to focus on one thing you can't keep doing this to me I kind of want to jump in a little bit when you said that it, you made a mistake by sending him uh, nude of yourself I don't think you made a mistake you were gaslighted mm-hmm. you were yeah. uh, you were manipulated mm-hmm. and you know yeah. he knew he knew how I, I'm sorry to say this but he took advantage of you and yeah, you, yes you, you trusted him and, and, and I don't think you should kind of put yourself in the position where you should blame yourself I'm just mm-hmm. saying that because yeah. I don't want you to think that way but, but yeah <laughs> what f- then what happened what yeah. the fuck dude he took like a year to show show like that side of him or is it because he was influenced by the people at his camp like that's so that's so weird There were, was there a reason was there a reason did you find anything like I feel like this guy was just like a long Wait. con, right? One year. Yeah, one year. That's a it's long, so long con, you know. No, actually, to be honest, I, I don't. I'm not going to say that I know a lot, but maybe he's. You were not the only one that he was doing. Yeah, this. Mm. I kind be. of figured that out. Yeah, mm. he he could be doing it to multiple people, and 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 you know, that's why he could say this type of thing. He could be arrested yeah. though. Like, oh, you know, she was underage at yes, the time. Yes, he can. Yeah, yeah. he can. Yeah. The age gap was not quite sus. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna encourage you to do anything, but yeah, he could. Like by law. So okay, yeah. I mean, uh, going back to that, you you sent you sent something, and then what happened after that? 
and then um, I I told him I needed to focus, and okay. then he I mean one thing to focus meaning that do not ask me that thing anymore, not to like break up and stuff. But then he told me that oh I think we should break up and everything, and like I tried talking to him, but it just didn't work out, mm. and he just left like without a thing. So I fell into really bad depression at the time because like I was one part of me was just so worried that he had the picture still, mm. and another part yeah. of me was like oh my god he left despite everything you know. Mm. And I couldn't even talk to my friends about it because when I tried, it, one of them laughed at me and told me, I told you so he's going to leave. And, you know, it wasn't really yeah. helpful. And um, yeah, that, that went on. And then I fell into self-harming as well. I started hurting myself every single day. And that was also because a friend of mine told me that it helps, you know. Oh, to, oh my okay. God. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So I started and I couldn't stop. And um, it went on for a good eight years, the whole self-harm thing after I started. And it was so, so difficult to stop. But yeah, I, there were a couple of suicide attempts as well because I just felt really anxious all the time. I started getting panic attacks and anxiety attacks. And I just didn't know how it's going to stop. And then what happened was after a year, I got this random number from someone, mm-hmm. a, a phone call. And... I tried texting that person and that person said, I found a phone outside a club and it had a folder of your nude pictures inside. And I freaked out so badly. I was just like, oh my God, after a year, you know, it's it, like it's coming back to haunt me. Right. And I I asked that person like, um, what's in that folder? Because I, as, as to what I know, I only sent one picture. And she said, yeah. oh, like there's so many and your number is also inside. What? Okay. So, yeah, like it was like much I'm pre-planned already. So I freaked out and I gave that number to a friend of mine. And then when my friend called, it was a girl who answered the phone. So he said, what is a girl doing with, with, with that? You know, you sent it to a guy, right? And I'm just like, yeah, I sent it to, to like my ex. And then I found out that that girl was actually my ex's current partner. And they actually teamed up together to send my pictures out and just to, you know, make my life miserable. So what happened next was they actually took my picture and they took my number and they MMS it to all the contacts on that phone. And that contact was actually, that phone actually belonged to my ex. So he did it on purpose. And my mom ended up getting MMS after MMS. And the whole time I was just really freaked out because I didn't know what to do. Because I clearly remember, I, 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 whenever I think of it, I go back to that same moment. I was doing my hair in the hair saloon with my mom right beside me. And this was happening and I was handling this and I keep, and I kept hearing like my mom's phone buzzing and I could see you have a new MMS message and it was that number. So I was so, so scared. And my mom did not subscribe for MMS. So when she tried to open the message, there's of course nothing there. But you know, all it takes is for one thing to happen and then, the, you know, I'll be gone. Yeah. So I was so afraid. I went back home and I was just thinking, oh my God, what do I do now? I can't even talk to anyone about this and mm-hmm. I do not trust anyone at all. So I um, reached out to my dad. That was when, that was the start of my, like a really, close friendship with me and my dad right. um i told him that i might have done like a mistake and um i i don't know how what to do about it and then he asked me what happened and i told him yes and then he said okay you you made a big mistake he said yeah i i definitely do blame you for for being a bit stupid but um mm-hmm. we will we will somehow work this out okay. so what we did we took my mom's sim card we broke it and then oh. we lied to her and said it's caught oh up my God. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and All my dad was on it too. So we got her a new number so that the MMS wouldn't go there. But that didn't stop it from spreading more because it first started off on MMS and then I started getting harassed by so many people, like unknown numbers saying that, oh, hey, sexy, I have your picture. Can you send me some? And all this terrible stuff. And then it went online. And this was like the worst thing ever. It went online. It went on Facebook. It went on Twitter. And there were so many um, profiles of me popping up with that as my profile picture. And it started adding all my friends. So all my friends somehow like kind of got the picture with them as well. And then they started spreading it to like, oh my God, have you seen this? And it went so, so, so viral. Hmm. It was so bad. Um, It's on Twitter as well. Until today, the profile is there. I'm not kidding. I'm kidding you not. It's been how many years already? I've been trying to remove it, but it's still there. Has Twitter not taken any action or... (laughs) So, wow. so, so this you... time, at the time was like, you were 15, I'm guessing? Were you 15? 14, 15? About 14, yeah. Wow. 14. Did you not, uh, did you make a police report? No. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I was so you, you, I, I understand. I understand. Obviously, yeah. you know, but then again, if I was your age, I wouldn't know any better yeah. too. Man, but I gotta yeah. say, your, your ex-boyfriend's current girlfriend at the time was a bitch man why would she do such yeah. things she's 
fucked yeah. up, dude. I mean, girls are supposed to yeah. look out for girls. Like, who would do that kind of shit to someone else? They it's could, sh- they could go to jail. Yeah. That boy can yeah. go to jail. He can be charged. And I'm just telling you. I mean, based on, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm an expert, but based on certain things that I've read, uh, you know, uh, he has violated your trust, and yeah. they can be charged for it because they, uh, leaked it on purpose. So. I'm just saying. I'm. Ju- I'm just saying. So. Wait. Do you? Uh, obviously, don't don't take my advice for it. You know, you need to consult a lawyer or or, or <laughs> read out the rules and stuff. But I'm pretty. But I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that. It's, Wait. It's do you find out like why are there more pictures? Because like you said, you need to one right, but there are more pictures in yeah. the folder. I think there were probably pictures of like other people as well. But then, or maybe they said it just to make Aww. me feel even more paranoid. Mm. Psychological. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Psychological bullying. Yeah. So that happened, and um. I, the only person I actually had to lean on was Arvin, Arvin Kumar. He was there with me from mm-hmm. the start. And I just went up to him and I said, I need help because I think that I'm going to do something stupid. So ever since right. then, he was always um, helping me out when it came to this because there used to be new profiles that pop up all the time and I needed people to report it. And when I mm-hmm. tell people that, hey, there's a fake profile of me, they go to the profile and the picture is there. Mm-hmm. So it's indirect marketing for that picture. Mm-hmm. So it's so difficult to like mm-hmm. get people to report it without like having them save the picture because it's so easily accessible. Yeah. yeah. And then like when I went back to school, the whole school got to know about it. It was terrible. Like and everyone was just talking about it. And that was when I started to like stay home a lot. I didn't want to go to school so much anymore. Because it was so embarrassing. And beside my school, there are two other boys' school, like all boys' school. Right. So they kind of got the pictures as well. And they used to like come out, like every time my school ends, they used to just come out and try to wait outside. And then when they see me, they start yelling names and profanities and all that. Right. So it was so, so, super, super difficult. And I just used to tell my dad, you know what, I'm just going to like stay at home and, you know, I'm just going to study and go to school for exams because okay. I'm, I'm worried that my mental health is going to go and also that I won't be able to like perform really well in school. Mm-hmm. So they allowed me to do that. And um, believe it or not, this happened until the age of 17. Okay. Like the whole picture kept circulating and circulating and circulating nonstop. Like every time I think it would just stop or die off, it kept coming up. Like someone kept bringing it up over and over and over. Like there was no end to it. Okay. And then um, in the year, I'm not sure what year was it, but I was 17. And this was a day before SPM. Someone, this was like after like um, my weight loss journey happened. So this was the period where I was at home and I was just thinking that my life needs a change. Mm. Okay. You know, I, I can't be this this person anymore. I feel like doing something for myself because I feel like I've hurt myself enough over the years. Right. And um, as I was staying home a lot, I told my dad that um, I'm going to start dieting and working out because I think mm-hmm. that I need a divert, like a diversion of my mental, like my mental thoughts and everything. And yeah. he told me, okay, go for it. So he was the only okay. one who actually supported me throughout my whole dieting and working out process. Like my mom and my grandma was so unhappy about it. They were like, oh, she's not okay. going to eat anymore. <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> but dad told me, like, no worries, just, um, you know, ignore them. Like, I'm going to get you a gym mat, dumbbells, and, you know, all you have to do is just study at home and then work out, do something that makes you feel a little better about the whole thing. Okay. So that was when I started, like, you know, working out and dieting. And I was really happy about it because I was away from all the negativity much. I didn't really get yeah. exposed to my friends so much, and I stopped all my tuitions as well. Mm-hmm. So... I used to do that every day and in one week I lost about one or two kgs and to see progress every week it was really amazing mm-hmm. like I felt yeah. like you know um, it was a good feeling so yeah. I lost like from 104 to 53 kgs in a matter of like six months to a year Whoa. what? Wow. that's a lot yeah that's crazy it's amazing <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. That's respect. amazing yeah respect yeah. that's amazing mad respect that's insane that's about 10 kilos a month yeah. 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 Wow. So I came back to school like as a new person, you know, and everyone was just like, oh my God, who's Is that? that? Because he recognized me. <laughs> yeah. Because it was a whole different change. Like, even my face changed to the point where people always say I did plastic surgery mm-hmm. and whatnot. But then like, this is just my face. I, I, I don't know how I changed. You know, I just did something and it worked out for me and I did it the healthy way. So in school, teachers used to come up to me saying like, oh, which drugs did you take? Did you go for liposuction and all this? And teachers? Mm-hmm. I felt... Teachers, yeah. Oh man, this school. I uh. say, yeah. I, I remember. I remember my. <laughs> I remember school, my wow. math. My math teacher calling my mom up to ask her if I was in drugs because you know when I was in form three, I lost a lot of weight, but not because I exercise. Okay, like, I, maybe exercise was a contributing factor last because suddenly I grew taller. Mm. Okay. Uh, same input, same intake of food, but I grew yeah, taller. You so you know, <laughs> yeah, I got stretched out so and much. So it? like, yeah, I called my mom. Is he on drugs? I it's swear, like, oh. all the adults, right? They really don't know what <laughs> yeah. is puberty. Eh? <laughs> 
And they just take yeah. Time. yeah, and they always yeah. don't believe in dedication. They think that there's an easy way out for everything. Yeah. 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 You know? So yeah, that happened. And then I was doing so much better after that. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I, I kind of like made, um, I, I kind of forgave myself back then. And I told myself that, okay, what happened has happened. There's nothing that can be done to change it. But I sure did learn a lot from it, especially at that age. And, you know, I'm not going to repeat it. I'm just going to be very careful. And I'm going to focus on me. So when I lost all the weight, I went back to school. I felt like a better person. These people came mm-hmm. back again. Um, with the picture again and this time it was a day before SPM I remember I was studying at home I was just preparing my notes and everything and then I got a phone call from my friend saying that someone spray painted my school wall with um, red, red paint and they said very nasty words like uh, Joanna's a porn star I'm not kidding it was so bad it was so so bad and wow. it was like public like meaning that um, everyone can see whoever that is using that road can see whatever that's written because oh. it was super super big and I was told to come to school with my dad and then the school also kind of blamed me for it they said that oh you did a mistake and you know this is your fault what and the... now you have to buy new paint and paint what? back to school what yeah this is ridiculous it oh my god like I'm, I'm getting I'm, mad it's, it I'm getting like so I, mad yeah. just hearing it it sounds like I'm, I'm listening to a plot of a movie man like, yeah, this is ridiculous. They the school actually blame you and ask you to and your dad yeah. to get paint to paint up something that you didn't do at all. Yeah. Oh my lord, man! I I I don't even want to ask the name of the school. I oh, I'm just I, 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 my school. I don't, yeah, we don't we don't have to we don't have to talk about the school. I, I don't want to put the, the the I don't want I don't even want to bring it up. We don't have to. People, if they know, they know. But this is why I feel that. Why isn't Malaysian schools a safe place to go to? Yeah. I'm not saying all schools are yeah. bad. I'm not saying all schools. Sorry, I'm not gonna say all schools. But there are some schools that I, I, yeah, <laughs> it's it's very hard. It's very dis- uh, It's very. Dis- I don't know, Joy- Joanna. You, you, to to go into detail of your story kind of makes me very frustrated because I come, I come, I, I listen to it as a father to a daughter who mm. one day is going to go to school. Mm. Yeah, and it worries me. And uh, you know, is my daughter gonna be safe? Should I teach her to bully other people so she can defend herself? No. <laughs> yeah. You, you know what I yeah. mean? You have yeah. all these thoughts. And this. So and this, like when. Sorry, I was just about to say the scary part is it's just one school. You know, how many hundreds of school out there? Yeah. How many more other little girls and little boys are experiencing this thing? Like, yeah, I I don't think it's, it's scary. A, yeah, as as tragic as this story is, <laughs> I don't I. It's hard for me to believe that it's a one off. Yep. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I can definitely then, see other people going through the same thing. Yeah, but in a different way, you yeah. know. It may be, yeah. So, so okay. So, like you know, when the school blamed you, you went through that. You know what happened next. You know what, what, what. I mean, was that, was that rock bottom for you? That was, um, you know, because my SPM was the next day, and I couldn't really concentrate <gasps> oh anymore. Oh my, my god. god. Yeah, and then like um, something creepy happened. Like I just went for SPM the next day. I put it all aside, and I did my papers. Thankfully, I did well. I didn't do so badly, but I managed to complete it. But then when I came back home, I found that someone had sent a letter to my post box. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it was addressed to me. And then like when I opened it, it was a typewritten letter to me. And yep. it was from the person who spray painted the wall. <laughs> okay. And that person said that, um, Hey, Joanna, I'm sorry for doing that. You know, like... Um, I joined them because they really hated you and they hated the fact that you lost weight and that you were slowly like venturing into modeling. And um, we also wanted you to fail in SPM, which is why we did that. But then like karma is hitting us back now because um, my brother's currently in the hospital and like he's like, you know, dying and I need your forgiveness and prayers to like make sure my brother comes back happy and healthy. And the worst thing was this person said that, I'm your friend. I have visited you. I'm quite close to you, but I'm not going to reveal myself. Oh my god! And until today, I have that letter with me. Until but today, do you know who she but is? Today, or I... he? No, I don't know who this no? person is. Wow! I hope that person is listening to this. That person. That person is <laughs> like. A... Oh. Well, <laughs> can I say it? Say I want to say it. <laughs> for me, it's like person's a... like the only reason that person ask for forgiveness is because something bad happened to them yeah what if nothing happened it wasn't true like a realization of that they messed up or they did something bad and it's like you know what selfish coward yeah like it's not like I messed up I should apologize you know it's just like oh man something bad happened to me maybe it's because I did this let me try and fix it that way man how shitty of a person can you be to try to ruin someone's life because you think like oh they're finally doing better like who does that man 
I got to shock myself because that was like the most extreme I've ever seen anyone <laughs> in my entire life go to. Like all the effort to just yeah. make someone feel in. Yeah. And, 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 it's, and the fact that he or she said that he's, she was close to you, like you were friends. Like I would, Visited yeah, you I before? would doubt who in my circle have the balls to do this kind of thing, you know? Like, oh my god. Yeah. Like a lot okay. of people, like um, like when I have friends, I normally invite them over. Then like we have like tea with my dad, and you know we have like this bonding session kind of thing. Because my dad always tries to bond with my friends and mm. you know be a father figure to them as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. So a lot of them are pretty attached to my dad, like in in many different ways. Like to the point they even chase me off sometimes, and they say I want to talk to him personally. I don't want you to be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So um. It could be anyone, even pe- someone that I'm friends with until today, and I actually don't yeah. know who that person is. Yeah. And that's just and that's just scary because, like, you know, I I would really like to know, but then like, <laughs> there's, no, there's no. I don't think I don't think there's a point yeah. for you to know anymore. Yeah. And I believe that when the time is right and that person comes up to you and owns up to it, I think you will look at it differently. Yeah. I I feel I I kind of feel that you have kind of gone past that stage Mm -hmm. i would like to think because like look at you now you're a confident person um you 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 are doing uh non non non-profit orgs uh to help people Mm -hmm. i mean like okay like even before we get there so that was probably rock bottom for you what happened after that you know did it go worse or did you kind of see an uh an up an up climb to you regaining you know yourself and being better i did i did like after my spm um Someone told me, one of my seniors in school told me that I should try modeling. So mm-hmm. I was just like, um, what is modeling? And then they told me that it was just like, you know, wearing clothes and just posing. And I felt so insecure because some part of me just felt that I was still the same fat person. You know, when you've been bullied your whole life, you just tend to yeah. carry the baggage and move forward. And although I was not fat anymore, I, every time I look in the mirror, I just feel like, you know, I'm fat. So yeah. I kept telling her that I don't think that I'm fit for this. I think that, you know... Um, I'm, I'm I'm still fat and she told me no no don't say that you know just just give it a shot you never know so I took my chances I told my dad that I've got something very very different and very very weird that I'm gonna try and um, I hope you support me and my mom wasn't really happy about it she was just like oh you're gonna like lose focus on your education if you're gonna venture into that field and stuff like that and no one in our family has done this before and she was like really negative about it but my dad was like a super supportive one because he always believes in letting kids experience themselves and, you know, learn from it. So even my first uh, clubbing experience and everything, he actually told me to go and to explore and just be careful. So that's how I kind of learned a lot of things because he gave me the freedom and I actually explored and I kind of learned a lot mm-hmm. by myself. Wow. And um, yeah, I tried modeling. It kind of like was my thing. I just felt a little better after doing it. And I posted the pictures and then like so many people were like, oh, it's really nice. You should do more and you should try more. You have to hide and you have this and that. But it took me a while for me to actually like believe in that like, or oh, actually have it all because I couldn't see it yet. And then um, I joined this pageant for fun. There was this one pageant I joined from fun. And um, it was my like it was just a for fun kind of thing. Like, you know, nothing really serious. I just wanted to see what pageantry was all about. And uh, it was a very bad experience. I'm not gonna lie, because I was very, <laughs> I was very very fresh into it. I didn't know anything. I didn't. I do not know how to wear heels. I do not know how to make up. I knew absolutely nothing because I'm a very sneakers mm-hmm. person. I hate wearing heels because I'm already tall. So it makes me feel very <laughs> short. And yeah, I don't like to wear heels. Oh. Uh, yeah, and it, it's so mm. painful. And it's actually quite dangerous to wear it for long hours because your legs can get really mm-hmm. badly affected. So. Um, it was a lot of practice and I used to get bullied even from my pageantry people as well because they used to be like, oh, how can you join a pageant without oh, learning yeah. how to walk? And, you know, and also I have like tons and tons of stretch marks and excess skin from weight loss. Um, so, so much. Like my tummy has all these rolls where it's just skin and there's no meat inside, you know. It's just there when you lose weight and a lot of people tend to point that out to me and tell me that, oh, you should consider getting plastic surgery but that's something I don't want to do because these are like, this is the... Um, evidence or this is the proof that I actually did something for myself mm. and I love that part of me I, I do not want to like you know remove it or anything yeah. wow yeah and stretch marks as well because like I believe those are like stripes that you earned in a sure. way mm. and it shows yeah. that, that weight loss so I always wow. try to like educate people when it comes to things like this but then you know when you're in the entertainment industry especially the modeling industry they can they can be very picky and they can be very very yes. judgmental especially in pageants yeah, so I got called all sorts of names and then like regardless in my first pageant, I managed to get top seven 
mm-hmm. and then like um the next pageant that I went to was the one that changed my life because I just joined in like as the last participant they were actually finding for someone tall and they thought that I could mm-hmm. fit them so I joined in and then it was called Miss Lango Earth and um I was very very stressed out because this seemed like a really big deal like this was a really huge pageant and I knew absolutely nothing once again but then I managed to win the crown and uh there was my first ever crown so I was, I was really wow. really excited about it this was in 2016 nice <laughs> yeah so um after that there was a lot of responsibilities that came together with it like uh they kept telling me that oh now you're representing slangor you know so you have to do a really good job and then like my manager told me why don't you just speak about your weight loss story and oh. i told my manager um my weight loss story is something that i've tried speaking about but every time i tried opening up about it i used to get the backlash that people say oh she's lying you know it's fake she used whitening pills and really really awful comments on the internet but every time i tried to speak about it and i told her i wasn't comfortable but then she told me why don't we just try one last time so i said okay, okay. so i sent her this huge draft which i wrote about my story and then with the before and after pictures and everything and then she uploaded it on the page mhm and to my surprise within an hour it, it went like 5000 shares wow. 10000 shares wow. and it went super super viral i i did not expect that to happen and then like astrovani and there were many many platforms that shared it including lad bible and uni lad yeah yeah so, yeah so i was i kept getting calls from everywhere saying that can you come for interviews can you come here can you come there and and i was just like you know i didn't know what to do because it was something really really new i didn't know how to yeah. move about it yeah but then like my manager managed to handle it and that's how like my my story reached out to people and i had people coming up and telling me that oh you know you're really inspiring and your story is something that really inspired me to lose weight and i felt really happy because as i was growing up um remember when i said justin bieber is my inspiration yeah. i always looked up to him mm-hmm. yeah and he always mentioned this quote where he said that um i always want to i always want people to look up at me and say um justin bieber changed my life so when i had people saying that you changed my life it kind of clicked there like, like you know yeah. oh, wow. like you want to yeah. be able to so, change someone's life right mm. yeah yeah so that made me really really happy i was just like oh wow someone people are actually doing something about themselves after looking at my story and they are inspired to make a change as well yeah. and um yeah it it kick started from there and throughout like my entire journey until today I still get lots and lots of backlashes for for everything I do especially the clothes I wear there are so many people mm-hmm. who say that oh, I'm spoiling like the tradition and you know I am a slut and a bitch and it, it just goes on and on and you know people always think that they have an opinion with whatever that yeah. you do but then they yep. tend to forget that you know all of us are humans as, as well you know especially people from the entertainment industry we we feel yeah. we feel everything we feel sad we feel angry mm-hmm. and it's not just like a colorful bit of roses and but no matter how much you always try to tell them they always tend to like think otherwise they expect like so much from you and it's so difficult mm-hmm. sometimes mm-hmm. and um all these fake accounts who come and you know <laughs> send you nasty messages you just don't know if they are even your own friends or they are even your own followers or even your own family members because i do have toxic family members I'm not going to lie like i used to be compared to my cousins all the time and i'm not close mm-hmm. to like mm-hmm. any one of them it's always just been me and dad which is why um when dad passed away it it really really made me sad i was just like um oh my god how am i going to do this you know like and instead of being upset about it i was nagging him even when he passed away it was just like ah oh, you left me alone and when what i'm going to do i'm all alone but then there was just this like really calm sense of relief that um you know now it's my turn it felt like okay he has passed like the baton to me and it's now my turn to like carry his legacy and stuff like that so that kept me going But regardless even during that passing after that passing I still had so many people who send me horrible messages because I used to get um messages that said you should kill yourself you know we are going to come to your house and kill your family like mm-hmm. really really terrible hate messages I I think I shared it on the IUD as well that was yeah. just like a small thing but I have like tons and tons of like essays of how they want to kill me and you know how they want to kill my family and all that and it gets really scary sometimes la so I what I'm trying to do now is I'm just trying to advocate for many things as much as possible. Yeah. Um I I try to speak about things that people don't normally speak about like my sexual harassment story about my yeah. nudes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It took me so so long because the the first time I spoke about it was last year and I've never never opened up to anyone mm-hmm. about it. But I told myself that you know this is something that women should know especially because a lot of women tend to get themselves into this especially now with all the telegram groups coming yes, up with yes. all this porn stuff yeah 
Yeah, and um, a lot of my friends personally have also gone through it, which is why I thought that maybe if I shared my part of the story, um, people out there would be able to relate and they would feel that they're not alone. And they could also take measures like making a police report, which I never did before mm-hmm. this. And, you know, yeah. I tried guiding them into it. So that, that went really well. I had so, so, so many women who came up to me and told me that um, they are going through it right now. And, you know, that... They have never spoken about it. Some of them who are going to get married next month and they're so afraid to even tell anyone because the pictures are still out there and all that. And mm-hmm. they come and ask me, like, what do I do? And, you know, like, can you come and help me talk to my husband? And I go, like, okay. oh, my God, how do I do this? But, you know, because it's right. not my place to do that. It has to come from That's you. True. So I try to uh, to speak about it as much as I can and um, sexual Sexual harassment, sexual topics, sex education, you know, you name it. All of these topics are something that I really, really stand for and I believe that should be advocated, especially in schools and whatnot, because that's where it all stems from, yeah. especially sex education and yeah, whatnot. Agree. 100%. So, yeah, um, that's how my life has been. And there are a couple of other stuff that happened, but then, like, it's... Uh, it's a lot like very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Joanna, I think like you've given us like, you know, a lot to learn from. I, I, I just yeah. one question I wanna ask. Now now being where you are right now in your current position and you look back yourself look back at yourself, your thirteen year old self. I know this may sound like a, a cliche question, but you know, how would you advise yourself, your thirteen year old self today? Um well, I would give her a hug first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that, yeah, that's for sure, yes. Yeah, yeah I'd give her a hug and um, i tell her to stand up for herself because that's something I never really did back then. I was always so afraid of people and what they would say. And I was, you know, I was always trying to fit mm. in instead of trying to be my own person. And right. um, I would just really tell her to love herself regardless. And you know that people make mistakes and it's okay to make mistakes because that's how you learn from them. If you don't make mistakes, you don't learn. And, you know, to reach out, to stay strong, and to always remember that you are the only you that you can be. So always focus on you and do not care about what other people think. Wow. So yeah, wow. That, that's something I would say. And, and, and to be honest, I, I, I would like to point out that when you made the biggest move to actually tell your, your father about it, I, I feel that it was the best move because your family will protect you at all costs. True. They, they will. And, and uh, that, I think that's sometimes what we're all really afraid yeah. of when we did something so bad. We are always afraid of, oh, this is going to embarrass my parents. parents. You know, how are they going to accept this? This going to... Em- but I feel that when you sit down and they understand what you're going through, because, you know, they as parents, they went through your yep. age as well. They have yes. gone through their yep. downfall too, right? True. They need to understand that they need to teach you to grow up. And, and I, 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 to be honest, like after hearing about what you told me about your dad, I feel your dad is such an amazing man. I wish I can bring up my child, like how your dad, you know, was there for you. It's, I, I, I'm really yeah. sorry to hear about what, okay. what, what you went through. But Joanna, uh, <laughs> I wish I could be there to give you a hug right now. It's okay, a virtual <laughs> hug. Yeah. Social distancing, social distancing. Like, I bet your dad will be very proud of you today, yeah. Yeah. yeah, your dad will be very proud. Thank of you. you. Thank you. I, I like you before I go. I think Shufei, you want to say? I anything? just said it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ryan. Um, before we started this session, Jin was like, Ryan, I need you to come on and I need you to listen to this girl's story. I had zero clue about what was gonna happen and right, I'm blown. right. Like your story is, is so amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's so thank adorable. You. It's I, I really found and a newfound respect for you. Uh, really. Yeah, yeah. serious. Like, thank yeah. you. Mad respect. Like the way you managed to overcome all these all these challenges, I'll call them challenges in your life to make you who you are today. This is, this, I think it's something a lot of people can learn from. Uh. True. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for sharing yeah, it with us. Know, it, uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's really tough, Thank heavy you stuff, too. you know. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad you're speaking out about it because especially things like Thank sexual you. education is, is something that's really, really lacking in our country and a lot of people are very, Thank very you. ignorant to it. So I, yeah. I really do commend you on your efforts to to. Thank you. Advocate for this subject. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jin, for having me on your show. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it means so much. Really, really happy to have you on. And for those of you listening, we hope you guys have taken away something from today's conversation. Uh, if you want to reach out to Joanna Joseph, what's your what's your Instagram? It's official Joanna J. Yeah, official it's Joanna. So J. so simple, and it's one with a verified tick on it. It's only one. Okay, yeah. don't go making other ones. <laughs> There's only one. And uh, Joanna, thank you so much. It's amazing to hear your story. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stream us an Apple Podcast uh, on Spotify. That's where we're at. We'll speak to you guys Bye-bye. next time. <laughs>